A while ago, I came across a scammer who was getting away with a very substantial sum of money. This is how I managed to track him down and find out who he was and where he lived. Because it was the contents of his PC which completely gave the game away. The first rule of Scam Club is always deny you're a scammer. I don't have any idea what guys, what you are saying, first of all, and whatever allegation you are uh, putting on me, that's totally bullshit. I, I, I can say that because I don't have any connection with this, these things, whatever you are saying, because I'm uh, helping my father in my, my father's business, that's all. But he sure has a very strange way of helping his father's business. You're looking at that guy's computer. His name is Karan Kumar Mishra, but he'd rather be known as Santander Security Headquarters. You can see him here set that as his name on TeamViewer. Note also the photographs on his laptop. We'll come back to these in just a moment. Because I was able to watch as he attempted to scam a retired doctor. Here he is setting up an account in his victim's name so that he can transfer cryptocurrency to his own wallet. Thankfully though, I managed to step in before this particular man, whose name is Thomas, lost any more money. You can see how that played out if you're a patron of mine. But I was too late when it came to another one of Koran's victims. Here he switched on the webcam of a woman whose name is Margaret. Although I didn't realise it at the time, she'd already sent over £100,000, that's about $120,000, to one of Koran's money mules. On Koran's desktop was a very fake looking check made out to this victim to the value of £100,000. This was obviously his way of saying that he would return the money. But not content with 100000 he was drafting an email looking for more. He describes himself as Jeffrey Bates, who's apparently an intelligence officer in HMRC. He notes that she has already withdrawn £100,000 under the guidance of cyber security chief Stephen Harper and in order to capture some Brussels based hacker she's going to have to do the same thing again. In other words they've already stolen £100,000 from her and they want yet more money. By the time I managed to reach Margaret sadly she had already lost that money but she was able to recover at least some of it from the bank because they didn't catch on to the unusual transactions of this 83 year old woman. Again, if you're a patron of mine, you can check your version of the video which goes into this scam in more detail. But how am I so sure exactly who this scammer is? Well, remember the photographs that appeared briefly on his computer? I managed to download all of them and they revealed some very interesting material. The person in the foreground in this picture is Karan, and in the background is his brother Arjun Mishra. And both brothers are involved in the scamming. Their computer was chock full of the kind of material you would normally associate with scammers. There were scripts that showed that they pretended to be BT in the UK and Telstra in Australia. There was plenty of evidence that they used Supremo and TeamViewer to connect to remote victims. From there, they would get them to log into their online bank accounts and try and drain them. The majority of these images were in a folder called Important Office Images and they dated back to roughly 2017. But there were very many more images on this guy's computer, including in a Sent Items folder. This was particularly interesting because it showed not only the office, but how they ran their scams. The photos showed a call centre in various stages of construction. It's unclear whether this was the actual location where I saw the scams happen, but it was certainly clear that Quran worked with quite a number of other people in the scam industry. Close-ups of some of the computer screens in this call centre showed that they used the very commonly used VC dial or RoboDial software that the majority of scammers will use. One photo even showed that they had CCTV covering this scam call centre. It's a shame it wasn't live whenever I saw Koran's PC. Most importantly of all, it showed some identity documents for the scammer. This confirmed his name and his home address. There was also his government issued identity card or Aadhaar card. But there were also images which gave me a bit of an insight into Koran's personality. There were plenty of motivational quotes and a lot of images which had money all over them. 
Even his phone case had one of these tacky messages. But really anything with expensive cars or money lying all over the place would be appropriate for him to send. This was the only sort of room apparently Koran would like to clean. His desktop wallpaper was a Rolls Royce and I would see this frequently as he would scam his victims. But this would all seem like bravado if it wasn't for the other sort of images that were found on his laptop. There were photographs of the computer screen which showed a refund form, gift card numbers apparently stolen from people in the UK, but most alarming of all, photographs of the laptop screen showing people logged into their bank account and sending thousands of pounds or dollars to other bank accounts. And here he is remotely logged into a victim PC in the UK and will be sending thousands to a money mule in Thailand. If you know why Thai bank accounts are a particular favourite of scammers, please add to the comments below, I'd be very interested in the reason. But he had a variety of money mules. Here you can see an Australian victim has sent payments to a mule in the USA. And of course, gift cards were always a good option for Quran. Here he's managed to persuade someone to buy some Target gift cards, but I quickly take a note of the numbers and I get the cards frozen so that he can't use them. He gets very confused as to why the gift cards that he can actually see right in front of him just won't work. But most sickening of all, I would watch him as he would pretend to be the various security departments of banks. Using a very set script, he would persuade his victims to transfer money to so-called safe accounts, often in Thailand. There are eight hackers found from your internet line. And until and unless we are not going to catch those hackers, not going to put those hackers behind the bars, your internet cannot be secured. And the main problem coming in front of us is all those hackers are actually hidden inside your internet line. Hidden in the sense they are using such a technology that they are hiding themselves from us. So I have already given a consent to the nationwide headquarters accounts team to do something special, something exciting and they have generated an anti-hacking code. Can you please be handy with a pen and a paper to make a note of this code? As always, when he says that he's going to generate a code and it needs to be written down, he's just distracting his victim so that he can edit the bank page. He will make up some random numbers in the hope that the victim won't see what he's doing here and adding £10,000 to this person's balance. 994 and seemingly the victim has an extra 10k. Congratulations, this anti-hacking protection code is confirming to distract those eight hackers who are hidden inside your internet line as we need to be doing something special. What our accounts team have did is an amount of 10,000 pounds has been transferred to your nationwide flex current account from where you pay your regular internet bills to BT and other companies. Now, within a minute or two, once your accounts are going to be crediting with £10,000. To make sure the victim didn't see that edit, he used a second screen. Now he reverts to the primary screen so that the victim can see his balance. And we are waiting for the opportunity so that we could be able to trace down the hacker's location and we could be able to put those hackers behind the bars. So simply just have a look onto your computer screen and let me know that your accounts has been credited with £10,000 onto your current account. Now that's lovely. Once the funds has been transferred, it is going to be taking maximum 4 to 5 minutes and all the hackers will get the update or an alert that Mr. Stewart's account has been credited with some huge funds and all those hackers will become active. They cannot be able to control themselves and they will bound to become active. And once those hackers will become active, their exact address and their location will be visible to us and we could be able to catch those hackers and we are going to put those hackers behind the bars. And once all the hackers are caught, simply you could be able to return the funds back to the nationwide headquarters accounts team from where it has came. And from this 10,000 pound only, you are going to be keeping your £100 compensation. So I will simply request you at the right hand top, you can see logout. Give a click on logout. 
He wants the victim to log out because a simple refresh of the page would reveal that that extra 10k wasn't there at all. But of course he'll want that £10,000 back before too long. So I had more than enough to identify the owner of this PC. And even though the photos were fairly old, maybe 5 years old, there were things like identifying tattoos here on the guy's left arm. So it was amusing when, five years later, journalists from the Daily Mail decided to confront him. It was obvious that the tattoo was still there. Thanks. Uh, what's, right. what's your name? Myself, Karan Mishra. Okay. UK citizen and all. Okay. I'm not getting what you're saying because I don't, I don't do these things. What is, uh, I'm, I'm totally aware of these things. Okay. We have not done any, any no, sort of fraud. Uh, no, uh, not at all. This footage was taken by the Daily Mail. I'll leave you a link to a couple of articles they've already written about Quran. The other man here is Quran's father, and he's vouching that indeed his son works for his business, and that's where he makes his money. But on social media, Quran displayed a very different aspect to his life. Posing in exotic locations and hotels, in front of expensive cars and in designer suits. In this footage from 7 News Spotlight, they also confront Quran, and again his father is there to defend him. I've left a link to their YouTube video in the description. Your son has been scamming Australians and British people. Your son is scamming people, sir. Out of a lot of money, he's creating a lot of problems for people. But his son was nowhere to be seen. Tipped off, we were after him, his phone suddenly went dead. And his social media set to private. Even though his social media had gone private, there was no doubt which computer was being used for the scams. He'd even taken a photograph of it. And even the username you can see here displays exactly who the owner is. And when he was running the scams, I could see the various network IDs around that laptop. He seemed to be working at the exact address which appeared on his brother Arjun's identity card. Indeed, Arjun can be seen in a good many of the call centre photographs, so it's very likely that the two brothers worked together. I did pass on all this information to the police in the UK in the hope that they would liaise with their counterparts in Kolkata. But after two years, nothing seemed to happen. This is why I got in touch with journalists in the Daily Mail in the UK and 7 News Spotlight in Australia. So for the time being, Quran and Arjun Mishra seem to have got away with their scams. But hopefully the police in Kolkata will have a fresh look at this pair and try and find out exactly where all their wealth has come from. But if you would like to support me in my fight against scammers, you can join Patreon, there's a link here and it's in the description. Or even if you'd just like to buy me a coffee, there's a link to do just that. And I'm also on Twitter, I'm Jim Browning 11 there. Once again, thanks for watching the video.